Amateurs have always played a role in the advancement of humanity. The word amateur means to love, to love the subject, to love the, to be motivated by love rather than the pay. Uh, as a matter of fact, during most of the great eras of scientific advancement before 200 years ago, it was amateurs who did most of the investigations that led to, for example, the discoveries in geology and in biology that um, brought such rapid progress. Now, what we've been experiencing in the 20th century is something unique in all of human history. A monotonic trend, the only monotonic trend across the entire 20th century, of the professionalization of everything. Um, Nazism, fascism, communism, all sorts of isms came and went. But at the beginning of the 20th century, people did a lot for their families, on average, that they had surrendered to professionals and companies and governments by the end of the 20th. This trend is one that we owe a lot to. Um, we have copious amounts of food because of professional farmers, um, professional protectors, are better at their jobs than the old militias, uh, and so on. We can, uh, the list is endless of benefits from specialization. It actually culminated a trend that began in the caves when specialists started making stone tools and baskets. But it's reaching its conclusion because at the current rate, you can't have that many more doublings of the number of professionals before you run out of people, let alone people who could go to university and get a professional degree. So clearly a counter trend is called for. I talk about it in my book, The Transparent Society, coining the term the age of amateurs, where this is the fluorescence of a new human mode of existence, where we are all professional in one thing, but also have avocations where a dentist, a skilled dentist, may go home and be a very, very highly skilled amateur bird watcher, contributing to the vast network of information about avian species. Um, an airline pilot may come home and be the leader of her uh, local civil defense squad. This trend has special meaning in science. Uh, I remember I was, um, when I was a teenager, I attended the amateur astronomy group in Los Angeles and ground telescope mirrors and helped build um, large, fairly large amateur telescopes. I was a member of the AAVSO, the American Association of Variable Star Observers. And we would go out on star parties and use blueprint star charts to compare variable stars to comparison stars and guesstimate with our eyes the magnitude of the stars and we'd also uh, we'd often come in within a tenth of a magnitude of each other uh, a great skill that's <laughs> obsolete now because of so many amateur astronomers having their own sophisticated um, silicon detectors but the point is that the tradition of amateur science continues and it is growing stronger. Recently, there were a lot of debates about SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And what's come out recently is that the SETI telescopes being built uh, in Northern California, the Allen Array, may be built entirely wrong for the kind of signal that we might receive from alien um, species out there. Uh, it used to be thought that uh, advanced civilizations would blare out a garish beacon 24 hours a day for a thousand years in all directions. It turns out that this is so prodigiously uneconomical compared to the aliens steering an antenna and targeting a likely star like our sun, like our solar system, with a likely planet like our Earth for a quick blast. Yoo-hoo! and then move on and then come back a year later, or maybe 10 years later. For this kind of a scenario, the current SETI telescopes are completely useless. But the SETI League is an amateur society that's trying to get 10,000 backyard dishes scanning the sky at all times. 
this would detect such a wow signal, such a beacon. It would engage and involve thousands of amateurs, and it would have the side effect of having all the sky being looked at all the time. Take that, you UFOs. This trend is continuing with wonderful things like Make Magazine, which caters to a growing spirit of do-it-yourself, DIY, um, not only imp home improvement, but making your own robots, making your own scientific instruments, becoming more self-sufficient in this regard. The Defense Department is finally, grudgingly, becoming interested in this concept. It has come to some people's attention that our cell phones, our sophisticated computers being carried around by 150 million Americans at any given time, maybe two, three billion human beings on the planet at any given time, they already have sensors in the form of cameras, which are making the UFOs harder to make excuses for also. Five billion digital cameras distributed around the world. This is going to make witnessing things much easier, but what if these um, cell phones were also equipped with chemical sensors that gave instant alert? This would benefit both the carrier, the owner of the cell phone, and possibly the integrated net mesh into which it's tied, whether or not it reports to the government or to an amateur mesh network. It would have the same effect, and that is increasing the security and the knowledge and the ability of human beings to make sensible decisions rapidly in real time. Now, this trade-off between the professionals and the amateurs is seen with great worry in some areas. Our professional protectors um, were viscerally bothered by what they saw on 9-11. That was the day of the citizen. Not a single thing done by professionals are very skilled, are very well-meaning, are very sincere and dedicated professional protectors. Not a single thing they did that day worked. It was the day that everything that worked was done by citizens, by amateurs, including all the video footage, all the phone calls into the buildings, getting the evacuation going, all the firefighting in New York after the brave professionals ran into the buildings and died, and especially the rebellion on flight UA-93, which arguably won the war the very day it started. This notion that we should go back to not only trying to have professionals anticipate problems with these prefrontal lobes above the, the eyes. Yes, by all means, give the professionals the information and the support and the, and the budgets they need to try to use anticipation to find threats. But it is the other side, resilience, that was always the bulwark of American strength. And this has its roots in amateurs and citizens. And defense professionals are starting to notice this. But the people who were always willing to cut the amateur a break, and because they needed them, were the scientists. Uh, I spoke of my own youth uh, being involved in amateur science. Today, almost every scientific profession has cadres of amateurs that feed them data, that help them, that can be assigned quick surveys and research projects from ecology to uh, natural science to geology. The Society of Amateur Scientists in um, San Diego, led by Sean Carlson, helps to lead this kind of effort. It's precisely the sort of thing that we're going to be needing if we're going to get across the professionalism wall, to gain the benefits of professionalism but also to gain the prodigious benefits that will come when we fully embrace an age of amateurs.